great things about doing these videos is that I am always learning something new. This week, I installed a light fixture and learned about grounding. Alright, this story takes place at my mom's house. So, my mom bought this house uh, about a year and a half ago. Is that right, mom? About a year and a half ago? Yep. And uh, it has this one light fixture up here that does not match anything else in the house. And she's really just not terribly fond of it, so it's time for it to go. So for Christmas, instead of buying her a bottle of perfume or some other random thing, I bought her a light fixture, which I'm going to install. But the first thing I've got to do is turn the power off. Uh, it's not always obvious which breaker goes with each area of your house, so we're going to have to do a little bit of trial and error here and see what happens. All right, let's try this one, Mom. It's off! All right, thank you! First try! I am fairly certain that pictures like this are the reason people are scared to do projects like this. Check this out. <laughs> nice. I took the old fixture down, which was pretty simple, just a couple of screws and unhooking the wires, although it was really heavy. Anybody want to buy a light fixture? Then I got to work installing the new fixture. There was already a ceiling plate installed for the old fixture, identical to the new one, so I didn't bother changing them. Then I attached the wires from the fixture to those coming from the ceiling. White to white, black to black, and grounding to grounding. Okay, quick side note here. Home electrical systems can vary quite a lot depending on when your house was built and where you live, but most modern homes have outlets, both plugs and fixtures, that have three wires. The active wire, or the hot wire, uh, which is usually black, which supplies the power to the outlet. The neutral wire, which is usually white, which carries the current back to the circuit breaker box, and the grounding wire. The purpose of the grounding wire is to provide an additional path for excess energy to be carried back to Earth, literally the ground, instead of transferring that energy somewhere it shouldn't be, like you, and electrocuting you. Electricity naturally looks for the shortest path back to the ground, and you don't want to be in that path. Alright, back to the story. Cover it with one of these um, electrical caps, and those are to make sure that um, they're well insulated, they stay connected to each other. Um, you definitely want to use those. Don't skip that part. I had a few minor mishaps while finishing off the installation. The screws in the ceiling plate from the old fixture were too short to reach the new fixture, so I had to take down the ceiling plate and change those out. <laughs> oh, um, and there was a lot of dropping. <sighs> Dang it! But once it was secure, we put in some light bulbs and tested it out. Alright, so now that we know that it works, I'm going to go ahead and put the uh, cover on. Yeah, this is actually pretty simple. Watch this, watch this, watch this. <laughs> Did you see the shock on my face? Ah, so what the heck happened? Alright, so basically every time we turned on the light, it was tripping the circuit breaker. I read the instructions again. You should always read the instructions, even if you think you know what you're doing. And this new one had a grounding screw in it, but the old one did not. The grounding wire is not attached to the grounding it's screw, and it's sticked up on the new It wasn't like that before either. I'm not sure how that other light fixture was operational. I went back and added the grounding screw, twisted the grounding wire around it, as is indicated in the instructions, and turned the light back on. <laughs> Okay, so now what? I got there again, took off the shade, poked around at it uselessly, and then put the shade back on and tried again. This time it worked. The only thing I did differently was not screw the shade in so far. That shade has an extremely long screw that I was attempting to screw in as far as it would go, but I don't think it's meant to do that. And this last time around, I decided not to bother screwing it in so much. And for some reason, it worked. The next day, I went back to research uh, the science behind what went wrong. And now I understand why there are entire professions built around the manipulation of electricity. Because it got real complicated real quick. Seriously, look up grounded electricity on Wikipedia and tell me if you understand it. During my research, I found that if the black wires and the white wires find some sort of a connection to each other, the current is basically never going to get to that appliance and will be sent back to the circuit breaker box at full force, uh, causing it to trip. 
This connection can occur through direct contact of the wires, or through water, or through another metal object such as a nail or a screw that has been driven into the wall. So what I think happened is that the screw holding in the shade was being driven in a little bit too far and interfering with the wires somehow. Now there's probably an electrician out there right now saying, wait, 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 that's not right. You didn't do it right. If so, please comment below because I would really like to understand this issue a little bit better. Electricity works! It's smarter than me! Thanks to all for watching.